Hi Geometry guys, we are on 8.5, hope you're doing well on this Monday. Um, if I forget to talk about this later, um, the answers to your homework are in a, like a document on RenWeb. So we're not actually going to go over them in the video today. So go and check there if you need. Um, Alright, so let's jump in. Uh, 8.5 angles and circles. I hope you're taking some notes here and able to um, kind of follow along as we look at this. These are all going to be pretty um, similar and yet different all at the same time. We're going to look at some theorems between the angle inside of a circle and the arc length and um, all of those types of things when you have some sort of an intercepted arc with an inscribed angle that we talked about on Friday. Okay, so let's look here. If I had some circle and I had an inscribed angle, uh, the difference here than yesterday is these are not just some inscribed angle that stops at the end point here. This is actually just the measure of an angle that happens to be inside of the circle with the vertex on the circle. Okay, so really the only difference, like if I had this gone and there was an end point, that's an inscribed angle. Um, and if they are not, it's just an angle. That's really the difference. This vertex still has to be right here Oops. Um, for this to be true. All right, and so if we remember what it was for an inscribed angle, whatever this angle measure is, twice of that is the arc. And if you had the arc, then you could take half of that to be the angle. All right, so the angle is half. So if this is 25, this arc is 50. If this is 80, the degree measurement there is 40. Okay. Now, this is also true even with the tangent line here. So let's take a look at this one and try it together. If I have, so really what I have here, this is an, an angle with the vertex on the circle, right? Do we see that? The vertex is on the circle. Um, we, what we could do here is even erase part of this and just say that's our angle right there. Um, but we are going to leave it as a tangent line. Um, so the same rule is going to apply. Here is my arc measure at 154. And I want to know what is my degree measurement, okay, um, for my theta. Remember, this is called theta, and it just refers to the degrees that might be there. So if I had 154 for my arc, and I need to take half of that to find my degree measurement, I'm going to get 77 degrees. Sound good? All right, let's try a couple more. Here's um, one of a few theorems that we're going to not name but just be able to use. All right, um, we have a circle and we have two lines that go through. Do you remember what those are called if it's a line that goes through and intersects at two points in a circle? It's called a secant. So this is an angle that is formed by two secants that intersect in the interior. Oops. What I want you to see right here, right now, the theorem we're talking about is if these two secants intersect and the intersection is inside of the circle. All right. Now, we're going to later look at what happens if the intersects outside of the circle. But for right now, we're looking at what happens when it intersects inside of the circle. Okay. Well, it creates an angle and another angle here. And if I know these are two lines, these are called vertical angles. So this angle is equal to this angle. Right. So you could apply that. But... It's not the theorem we're looking at right now. Um, so if I'm looking for a measure of angle 1, again, that's going to be the same measure of this angle here. These two are going to be supplementary. All right, you could go on and on with all of that. Um, I need to apply this rule here. So make sure you put this in your interactive notebook. Um, I'm going to try to be clear with everyone. I'm not going to be collecting interactive notebooks this quarter, so just make sure you're keeping up with them to the best of your ability. I think it will be the most helpful. You're allowed to use them on your quizzes, assessments, things like that online. Uh, so just make sure you're keeping up with them, please. But that's going to kind of be just on you. All right. So I have some arc measure here, AD, right? And if this angle were, I don't know, 25, then this out here would be 50, right? Um, actually, I can't necessarily determine that because this angle is not, uh, the vertex is not on the circle. So sorry about that. Okay. So I have some arc, though, that corresponds with this angle. Can we see that? All right, so this arc here is arc AB. And this arc over here is arc A, I'm sorry, CD. 
And if I take these two arcs that are created by these secants um, and add them together and then cut them in half, I'm going to have this angle measure. Okay, now it looks like, oh, hey, it should just be equal to that angle. Of course, that makes sense. Um, but it's not always going to be so perfectly right in the middle, half here where they intersect. All right, what we need to know is we need to add these two together, cut it in half, and then um, we have our measurement for our angle. So let's try this one. Do you see how this guy intersects a little bit further over to the side? What do I have to do? Remember back to my rule here. I'm going to add these arcs together and then cut them in half and I will have the measurement of that angle. All right, so let's do that. 30 plus 10 would give me 40. Divide that by 2. So the measure of angle 1 would be 20 degrees. Make sure you have the degree symbol there. All right, how you doing? Keep up with the notes here, okay? This is theorem 2. Again, if you need to kind of stop, always pause the video if you need to get caught up. Don't rush through it. Don't let me keep going past you if you're not there. Just hit pause, okay? All right, so here is theorem 2. We have two lines. They're secants. They named them here, but they intersect in the exterior. There's a little bit of a difference, right? We just did one where it intersected inside the circle. Now, what happens if they intersect outside of the circle? I'm not just going to add these up and divide by 2. It's not going to work. What I need to do is actually subtract them. And if you notice, this is the one further away from my intersection. The one further away from my intersection and then subtract the one closer to that actual point of intersection um, and that has to do with just making sure that it, you don't end up getting a negative number there because this one will be bigger okay alrighty well let's try one actually let me highlight this again please make sure you have this in your interactive notebook this rule and make sure you have a picture with it or there will be no context for that because what's the difference between that one and this one here well, just the addition sign, but it makes a big difference. So this is when they intersect on the interior. Maybe we should go back and put interior intersection. Okay. This one's the exterior intersection. Interior you add, exterior you subtract. Let's try one. All right, here's a circle two tangent, well they're not tangent, excuse me, two secants, um, and I have some arcs here, all right? So am I going to add them up and divide by two like last time? No, I need to subtract them from each other, and then I can take half of that. So I need to take 150, remember that's why these parentheses are there, you have to follow the order of operation, okay? Subtract and then you can multiply by half or divide by two, that's the same thing. All right, this gives me 120, and then I'm going to divide that by 2, so I would get 60 degrees is that measurement right there. All right, next one. All right, let's try the third theorem. Again, pause it. I know I'm going fairly quickly through this. Hopefully you'll have a little extra time today to practice with homework. All right, so what happens if we have not just two secants, but what if I had a secant and a tangent? Now, a secant and a tangent are going to have to intersect in an exterior way. There's no way you can have a tangent because it doesn't go inside the circle at all and have its intersection inside the circle. So this is the only case here. And so we're going to kind of follow the same rule as our last one here. If it's at outside of the circle, whether they're two secants or a tangent and a secant, you're still going to subtract. Okay, so you're going to say, write it down this formula right here. Now, I want you to know your book or anybody could number that angle or they could name the angle with letters. So here they named it. B F A, B F A. So follow B and then go to F. It's like a road map. It tells you follow the order. F means that's the vertex. Remember, it has to be in the middle. So follow that order. All right, take a minute. Pause this if you need. Um, draw this picture. Write the formula for it here. And then let's try one. Um, I know I'm going quickly, so go back, pause it, do what you need to. All right, 
So what do we do? We need half of something, but we need to add the or subtract these two. And remember, we're going to subtract the larger one from the smaller one. Okay. So I'm going to have 200 minus that 70. Okay, 200 minus that 70 is going to give me 130, and then I'm going to take half of that. So 65 degrees for the angle. All right, it intersected on the exterior. We're still subtracting. Let's try one more. If you notice, what we could have, we could have two secants. I'll back up a little bit, right? We could have a tangent and a secant, or we could have two tangent lines. Tangent and tangent. But because they're both tangent, it is still going to where? Intersect on the exterior of the circle. So exterior, you're just going to subtract. That is consistent every single time. If it's exterior, you subtract. If it's interior, you add. If it is uh, an angle whose vertex is on the point, then what you have is half of it, exactly. Half, there's no adding or subtracting, you just take half, right? We're still doing this half, we just have to add or subtract. So we're just kind of building on itself a little bit. Okay, and I like the name of this measure, CFA. Anybody miss CFA? You know what I'm talking about? Chick-fil-A, yes, I hope you said Chick-fil-A. All right, CFA is your measure here, or measure of angle one. And it is one half, and then subtract these two. So write this down in your interactive notebook as well. Pause the video. This is what happens when you have two tangents, and they will intersect on the exterior. So let's try one. Oh, I forgot to give the little number here. And I forgot to do this, wow. All right. So what is the measure of angle one in this case? Well, take half, subtract the larger, or the smaller from the larger. Okay, so I'm going to have one half of 200, or 100 degrees is the measure of your angle. Again, all of mine don't really look to scale, so just kind of <laughs> deal with what I have there. Okay, sorry, I know I went fast. If you need to go back and pause it, I'll kind of come back over here for you. Um, okay, get that example in, and... I hope that makes sense. We practiced one of each one. Tonight your homework is going to be um, identifying whether you're going to take half or the sum of the measures, adding them together, or the difference of the me measures, subtracting them. Basically, just look for this. If you've got your vertex right here on the circle and the whole thing is inscribed in a way here inside the circle, then just take half of the measure. If your interior is intersecting inside the circle, add them. And outside, subtract them, and you could have a secant and secant, a tangent and secant, and still subtracting, or a tangent and a tangent, and you're still subtracting. Only choices there, okay? So you have kind of a multiple choice section there, and then I'm going to ask for you to find some angle measurements, just like the ones that we did. All right, well, let me know if you have any questions. Tomorrow you're going to have a video from, actually, the next two days you have videos from someone else. I hope that helps give a little variety to what you're doing, and um, let me know how that goes. Thursday, reach out with questions if you have them, and Friday you'll have an assessment all the way up through this material today. All right, so the stuff you're going to do Tuesday and Wednesday is not going to be on that assessment. So it gives you a little time to practice it if you need to. All right, have a good day. Miss you guys.